Hello and welcome. Uh, we were able to, in previous videos, we were able to run uh, GeoNode uh, deployments using the GeoNode uh, core installation, advanced installation, and basic installation using Docker. So in this tutorial, uh, we are going to look at, uh, there's a new or upcoming version of GeoNode, which is GeoNode uh, version 4. Uh, so just to check on it quickly, uh, we have these, the release schedule for GeoNode. And uh, this is version 4, which is an upcoming version. It's currently on the release candidate, uh, so at the time of this recording. And uh, we are looking at the first table release, which will be released uh, in the end of the, this month. So let's see what it contains, because it's already there in the uh, repository. Uh, so we've been working with the, the Geono 3.2. And uh, I think 3.3 in some instances, but we have these journal 4.x uh, version branch rather. So basically, I've already cloned my repository. Uh, let me just click this. I had already cloned the repo. And uh, using the, if we check the history, uh, this is. I can check using the git branch. And I'm already in the four point X branch. So you can check uh, all the branches using this command. Yeah, so we have all these. So we, we are working on four point X. So there are these other versions that are there and actually some of them are being used. So We'll just proceed with the steps. The other thing that uh, I'm using Windows and uh, we have uh, activated Windows subsystem for Linux and I've also installed Docker to add on this. So you need to have Docker installed, uh, Docker desktop, uh, which are kind of interacts well with the Linux. And uh, one more thing before I forget, we inside the settings, you need to ensure that you have used the WSL you have checked this uh, WSL based uh, engine and inside the I believe the resources we have WSL integration so we should ensure that you have uh, enabled the integration uh, with the default uh, WSL distribution like mine is not checked and I can just click a refresh I can apply and then restart uh, docker so yeah so we can go back to the home page and uh, i'll just minimize this so i have the wsl and uh, i think i can repeat this step for cloning i'm going to now go back to my github and then i'm going to copy this repository for geonode remember this is the main geonode repo and then I'm going to add git clone. And at the end, I'm going to add the branch using the dash hyphen B. I'll just call it 4.x. Uh, then we can we'll wait until it completes to do to clone the repository. Yeah, so we've been able to clone our repo and it is in this folder called Geonode. So now the next step will be navigating into the folder. And uh, you can see the files as listed here. Our interest is uh, we have this Docker build. Uh, this is a script that you can execute uh, as shown in the previous uh, videos. And uh, you know the rest will, will work out. So what we'll do right now, we are going to uh, let me just see the contents of the Docker build. So we have this Docker build, uh, no cache. Uh, we also have Docker compose uh, stop. Uh, it also starts the containers in a detached mode using this slash D and uh, it removes the uh, any uh, in unused containers. So I had already uh run this command previously because this one takes some time to build it takes quite a lot of time 
uh, which we may not have. So I can just use the Docker PS uh, or Docker images. Sorry for what Docker PS shows the containers that are running. Okay, so it's not showing us, but when I come to these Docker desktop, so this is a user interface for Docker and it is also in Linux. You can use it for those who are not, you know, they're not very comfortable using the terminal. So we have all these versions, as you can see them. I had already done a build. So I'm just going to run the other command, which is uh, Docker Compose App. I won't run the stop since there are no containers that are running. Yeah, so it will start the containers. And uh, while it's doing it, you can check out check it out here. You notice that something is happening. This button or this indicator that shows in use was not there. So right now it's already there. And I think I'll put them side by side. Yeah, so this is a user interface for Docker Desktop. You can even check the containers that are running. And uh, you'll see that we have all these containers, apart from GeoServer data, which has exited. I don't know why. But you can see that these, uh, these are all the containers that constitute for uh, GeoNode. Uh, the good thing about the Docker Desktop is that you can be able to uh, navigate uh, inside the containers. Uh, so let's see, we can use this, this button here. So we are in containers. Uh, then in each container that is running, you can be able to open a, a terminal inside it. For example, I've clicked on the terminal for the first uh, container, which is geonode in Ginex. You can use the ls command to check for the files. I can even use the env to check the uh, environment variables that are present in this uh, container. I can even check the container uh, the OS using the uname, which is uh, Linux. And you can see I can even use a slash a to check details. So it's you can run some commands inside this container. Uh, so the same can be done for others. Uh, for example, we have these for post GIS. Uh, we can check it. So here we have the environment variables, which are quite many. And these environment variables, where, where are they coming from? Uh, so back to the main terminal, you'll see that inside this geonode uh, that we cloned, we have uh, should be having a dot env it's hidden yeah we have this env we have actually another one for the development version or well, development environment rather and uh, local environment and uh, tests uh, so let's just see the contents of this dot env and now this .env file is what you can edit before running uh, uh, running your containers. It has so many, a lot of information. Okay. You can add uh, your own parameters. Uh, like for the, see we have the passwords for Postgres and uh, Geno database and the like. Yeah, so. I have used the ps command to check the processes that are running inside the this container and you can see we have postgres that is uh, running uh, so i can exit um then maybe we can check for another one let's say something like geoserver uh, we can start with the environment variables and we see that you have them there uh, we can also check for uh, the processes that are running. I think we can also check, I'm not sure if this will work, but you can check for the uh, ports that are running and you have forgotten the command. So we have 
these uh, containers that are running now to access Geonode, it's running on Nginx uh, server, web server. So there's this button here that is showing open with browser. So there are two ways. I already know that it's running, it is running on localhost, so I can just type in localhost. Yeah, I think it takes some time to for the Django entry point to complete, uh, as I had shown in a previous video. So we can just click on this to see what is happening in the background. So there's yeah, some, something that I believe saying connection refused. So anytime I browse or anytime I refresh in my browser, you'll notice that something is happening. The log this is a log file. The log file continues populating uh, because it is an, in this case, it's even showing the browser. So for those who are familiar with the server logs, this is like the access log. And I, I believe it's an access log combined with the error log that we normally have in the server. So you can use this to monitor your, to see what is going on in the background. So I can also click on this salary for geonode and I can see the logs. So if I may have encountered an error, then I can be able to uh, use it to monitor. Uh, we also have this one, Geonode. So I believe uh, to also check the all the logs for all the containers, you can just click on this main, uh, main container, I mean, uh, container. So I don't know why this one is not running. Uh, GS server configuration for Geonode. So, and then you can also open uh, your containers or you can also open your uh, in, in, uh, Visual Studio. Let me see whether this Geonode has come up. So we are going to give it some minutes it really takes some time to you know to come up if you're using the terminal uh, you can use docker uh, docker compose logs uh, this one will give will show you will show us all the log file all the logs but if we want a specific log uh, you're going to use the name of the container and it is, uh, I believe it's called Django for Geonode. So I can actually copy it from here. Uh, I don't know. Just see if I can be able to see all the running containers. So we have Django for Geonode. Okay, I don't know why it's not showing here. Uh, so we can just stick to this. Yeah. So let's give it some time so that uh, it can be active. And once it's active, then you can be able to see what uh, the user interface for uh, Geno. Okay, so after several minutes, you may still be seeing this. So you give it some, I don't know how many minutes, but it may take some time to come up. And then you can navigate to your local host. If you are using from Docker desktop, as I had mentioned earlier, you can be able to uh, go to the container section and then you can click on this arrow to show all the, uh, all the services that are running, all the containers that are running. Then you can click on this arrow. There's this arrow that shows open with browser. So whenever you are running anything that is web-based, uh, then it's going to appear there. Okay, it's trying to, to run on HTTPS, uh, port 443, but we are not running on HTTPS. I'm using it on a local uh, server. So this is the user interface for Geonode. And uh, it is kind of different from the previous Geonode that we, had, uh, we were looking at. We have the logo up here. And we have a search bar as well. We have the register and sign in buttons at the top. And we have these uh, banner 
section. I'm not sure if it's a banner or the bootstrap jumbotron. Then we have these data maps and geo stories. Uh, so we have two in two additions. So we have geo stories dashboard, and I believe also features was not featured was not there in the previous. So we can also, we also have an about. Let's probably click on the about. We have under about we have people and groups which are, has, has also been there. We can also change the language. Let me change it to German to see that it's actually working. And it, indeed, it's actually working. So let's return it to English. Uh, then we can sign in. So for this sign in, you have uh, the username and the password. So by default, I believe it is admin, and the password is also admin. Yeah, and I think I've uh, successfully logged in yeah, because the information here has actually changed. And uh, there's something that appears this. Is something here that is not visible, but it appears here showing profile resent and means your server. So allow me to log out first and uh, check out where am I getting these admin from? You may try to log in and you realize that the default probably is not working. Like in the case for Geonode, uh, Geonode template project. Uh, Geonode project. So if you are using this template project, then you may have uh, an issue because the default uh, information is not the, it's not uh, the admin admin. And uh, it's normally set with this .env uh, .sample. So in my case, we are working with Geonode. So we have the .env file. And this one is the one that uh, sets the password. So. I can just check it from this repo. Uh, yeah, we have this username admin and password admin and the admin email by default is the admin at localhost. So it has been set by the .env file. Uh, let's see. We have it somewhere. We have it somewhere down here. Here it is. So if you set your, before running uh, or building your containers, you should be able to run, to set, have set this to your particular uh, pass, uh, admin and passwords that you want to use. And another way to also hack this, if you're not sure of the password and the username, is go back to the Docker desktop, and then you can run the terminal for, I believe it's this Geonode, Geonode. And you can do, you can check out the env by typing the env file. And you have this admin username is admin. And not sure where the password is, but probably you can use some command uh, if you are good in Linux to check, to filter the particular, uh, because the glob file has so many things. But you have this admin email, uh, which we have already seen that is also set in there. Uh, env file yeah and we have other things like postgres password that you can also get if you're not sure so i'll just close this and i'll proceed with the login or signing in and then and the password is admin and the username is also admin so the next step uh, before we proceed is uh, we have this name on the uh, title here the title on the tab so this is set you can set it using the the background uh, the administration panel uh, which is a an implementation of django and you can see there's something that i have tried to set recently using the recent action so yours may not have this recent action if you have not made any changes anywhere so you'll scroll down up to the place that we have the sites we have these sites and if you click on the sites, you'll see that the display name that I had set is my geo portal. So in yours, it may be showing example.com uh, in the home page. So if you want to change it, you can change it. If you're also running your geo node in some domain, uh, mm -hmm. like you know joseph.com or johndoe.com, then you can be able to set it up here. So I won't change the domain name, but I can change this display name and I can call it my awesome. 
Geo portal, for example, and then I'm going to click on save. And you can see it has already, uh, it has been successfully changed. And then I can view my site and you'll notice that it has already changed. So there are so many other things that you can change using the admin. Uh, so yeah, you can just access it using the admin, uh, the admin account. And then in the next step, uh, we are going to upload the data or rather in this current step. So we have this button that is shown here that uh, is indicated as add resource. And I'll click on it and you have all these options. You can create a geo story, a dashboard, a map, a data set, and you can upload also a document and a data set. So we're going to click on the data set and then you select the files. I had already downloaded some image from Natural Earth. So I'll click on the TIFF and you'll notice that the good thing is that it shows a kind of images you can add here. So, or the kind of data sets that you can add. So I'll click on upload and then start the upload process. And I think you can check in your container to see what is probably happening uh, in the background. And then as it's also doing its work, uh, yeah, it has appeared on the on this area. And you'll notice that we have a timestamp of sorts that shows the time of upload and the date and time of upload. So, I can, so there's also a percentage that shows the progress of the uploads. So while it's doing its thing, I can probably return to home. Oh, there's a button that has appeared there that shows view. Uh, here it is. So let me add another resource. So I have some shape files that I also downloaded from GADM website. Uh, so I'll probably add, let me add around three layers. Actually, they are all three. So let me just add all of them. And you'll notice that we have some information here that tells us that the .cpg extension of the S3 shape file is not supported. Uh, you can see that it is also showing the file sizes and the file extensions that you're going to upload. So I just clicked on upload. So this also shows us you can do a bulk upload just like previously. However, I think this in user interface is more intuitive, interactive rather. And you'll notice that there's a green bar inside here. There's a green bar that progress bar that keeps on moving whenever you are uploading your uh, uh, data. And uh, the first layer has, believe it has completed. Yeah, we have an error it's saying the upload process failed. Please check the validity of the file and try uploading it again. So this is on layer three. So I can just stop process to allow probably the others also to continue. Okay, so we have an issue on this layer three, but there's no problem. We can use the ones that we have, or we can also try and re-upload it just to confirm that it is okay. And we can remove the .cpg because we know that it's not being supported. And then you can see uh, the timestamps. Another thing worth mentioning is that you can monitor your, I believe there's a way you can monitor your resources. Uh, for example, if I click on Nginx, I can check the statistics, the memory that is being used, the network, and the, if there is any network action, uh, salary. You can also click on these statistics to see the memory usage. And then, can also check on this RabbitMQ, which also shows the CPU usage in percentage. Yeah, so the layers have completed uh, downloading or uploading rather. So you can click on the data and you notice that you have all these uh, cards. Uh, they look like a bootstrap. I think they're not sure, but I think they're bootstrap cards. 
Yeah, so we can op we are open we are opening one of our of the layers. The Geonode has been heavily integrated, or it has been integrated with the Map Store. So this is the dashboard uh, that we are talking about, and it has a Map Store component underneath. So if I want to view the layer on its own, I can just click on that View button. And then after clicking on the View button, we have the, the whole uh, image. Uh, that appears i think it may take some time because of the bulkiness of the image yeah and you'll notice that whenever i click i've actually clicked somewhere in the map so it displays a uh, latitude and uh, longitude so while it's doing that you can you'll notice that if we check on the believe this is a work of geo server so whenever if you check on the statistics you'll notice that the ram or the this uh, ram and the cpu is also increasing yeah because of the rendering and all that that is partly work of the geo server and uh, there's also actual uh, some action in post gis so we have these uh, these are some of the uh, features that we have in the uh, Geonode 4.0. So one thing worth mentioning is that uh, if you want to exit your service or close the Geonode services gracefully, uh, there are two ways. You can use the terminal way uh, by running Docker uh, Compose down and if you want to remove the volumes i forgot to mention something else we have the volumes so this is where data is being persisted okay we have the geonode backup restore data geonode database and if you click on one of them you're going to see the path to this uh, data and you can actually also see the data itself by clicking on this data button here so uh, let's actually check for the uh, Geonode data. So we have this Geo server for Geonode. You can click, and uh, no, you can actually go back and check the data. So it's saying that it has no data to display. Uh, we can check these. There are these volumes that are, do not have a name. I'm trying to, to see if we can be able to access our. some data so let's see what is in the backup and restore um, then you can check something else like the geonode temp yeah if you look at this you see that we have some uh, kind of uh, data i'm not going to go deep into this because uh, it's also something that I'm also learning. Uh, let's see what we have in Rabbit and Q. Yeah, we have these files. So that is the beauty of Docker, uh, Docker Desktop. Uh, it, it has a quite intuitive dashboard. So you can use Docker Compose down and you can add dash V. I'm not going to use this. I'm going to use the Docker Desktop. Actually, the terminal way is faster but just, uh, for those who most of us who are not probably very conversant with the details you can just stop this geonode service by using the stop button so when i click on it you'll notice that you'll start seeing exited uh, it's uh, gracefully exiting uh, or closing these uh, containers And the last one is uh, Geonode, Django for Geonode. Yeah, so now it has exited. And if we try to access our local host, then we are not going to see it. And yeah, now if, the next time, if you want to start, you can just come here and click on this start button. Or alternatively, you can run Docker Compose app and you add this dash D for 
for, so that you can run in the background without showing the logs. Yeah. So this brings us to the end of this uh, tutorial. And uh, thank you for watching. Please uh, like, subscribe, and share my videos. And also don't forget to click on the bell icon so, so that whenever I upload new content, you can be able to uh, receive a notification.